Mary Patton, a pregnant teenager, never intended to be a sea captain, but that's what she became in 1856. Mary was 16 when she married Captain Joshua Patton in 1853. He was 25 and worked ferrying cargo and passengers from New York to Boston. The next year he was offered the captain's berth on the clipper ship Neptune's car after the previous captain fell ill. Reluctant to abandon his young wife, Joshua got permission to bring Mary along for the voyage. With Mary at this side, Captain Patton made a fast passage from New York to San Francisco, then onward to China, London, and back to New York. Mary spent her days looking after her husband, studying the ins and outs of sailing and assisting with the navigation. Coming from a well-to-do family in East Boston, Mary knew how to read, and she began studying navigation in depth. That first round trip went smoothly, but the same voyage in 1856 did not go well. In July of 1856, Joshua Patton again captained the Neptune's car as it left New York. Mary Patton again joined him. This time, she was pregnant with their first child. As was common in those times, several clipper ships that had departed at the same time were conducting a friendly race to San Francisco. The need for speed was anything but trivial. A captain might earn $3,000 for a successful voyage from New York to San Francisco. But if he could complete it in less than 100 days, he could receive as much as $5,000. Joshua felt under the weather at the beginning of the voyage. He also immediately had problems with his first mate, who was insubordinate. When Patton found the mate sleeping on watch and leaving the sails reefed, which slowed the ship considerably, he had him detained in his quarters. The second mate was not competent to navigate, so as the ship approached the southern tip of South America, Joshua attempted double duty, both his and the first mates. Then, just over halfway through the voyage, Captain Patton was struck down by what was referred to as brain fever. With the first mate locked up and the second mate incapable, Mary took over the command and navigation of the ship. She later said that she didn't change clothes for 50 days. She split her time commanding the ship and caring for her sick husband. As if she did not have enough on her hands, the first mate attempted to foment a mutiny, which she successfully faced down. As Joshua regained some of his strength, he relented and returned the first mate to active duty. Soon, however, he noted that the first mate was not following the course he laid out. He again had the mate detained, and upon investigation he learned that the frightened mate was attempting to take the vessel to Valparaiso in Chile. Had the ship detoured, Joshua feared the crew would leave and the cargo would be lost. With $300,000 worth of cargo on board, sea captains were chosen because of their sense of responsibility. Neither Joshua nor Mary Patton were prepared to sacrifice the cargo entrusted to them. So with the mate again confined, and Joshua relapsed into a feverish haze, Mary once again had to take command. When the vessel arrived in San Francisco, completing the dangerous trip around Cape Horn, Mary Patton stood at the helm and navigated the ship into port after a voyage of 138 days. While the voyage was relatively slow, of the four clipper ships that had sailed from New York at the same time, Neptune's car was the second to arrive in San Francisco. Word spread of how Mary Patton had nursed her husband, navigated the clipper ship and protected the vessel's cargo, all at the age of 19. Suddenly she found herself an instant celebrity. Newspapers coast to coast carried the story. Mary and Joshua traveled back to Massachusetts by steamship where Mary gave birth to a son who she named Joshua. The ship owners granted her a $1,000 bonus for her service and the newspaper, the Boston Courier, set up a fund to help cover the costs of caring for her husband. Mary was quoted as saying that she had done only the plain duty of a wife towards a good husband. It would be nice to say that the story of Mary and Joshua Patton had a happy ending, but that was not the case. Joshua never recovered from his illness, 
which was likely tuberculosis. He died in July of 1857 at age 30. Mary died of tuberculosis on March 31, 1861, shortly before her 24th birthday. Their son Joshua never married and died in an accidental drowning at the age of 43. The Patton Healthcare Clinic at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy at Kings Point is named in her honor.